Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters with the miracle tip. King size, regular. Both at the same low price. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Stage from Hayes got here, Mr. Dillon. Oh, that's good, Chester. There wasn't nobody on it, though. Oh, were you expecting somebody? No, sir, but that ain't the point. Oh? How can they run a stage line without no passengers? <laughs> well, I don't know, Chester, but the fewer people come to Dodge, the less trouble it means. Uh, yes, sir, but if people don't come here, you wouldn't have a job, Mr. Dillon. Oh, you think everybody in Dodge right now is an honest, law-abiding citizen, huh? Oh, no, sir. Is that what I said? <laughs> Is this the marshal's office? Yeah, I'm the marshal. Come on in, mister. Uh, my name's Pat Clay, marshal. Oh, how do you do? Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Chester. Hello. Marshal, I got bad news for you. Well, nobody ever came here with good news, as far as I can remember. But what I got, well, it might get you killed. Oh, is that so? Now, now don't get me wrong. Not by me. No. No, sir, I, I don't shoot people. But you know somebody who does. Well, Jim Beetle, that's who. Jim Beetle? Here, Marshal, read this. They told me to bring it to you. Now, this looks like a court order. Who signed it? Judge Miller. You know him? Yeah, I know him. Uh, so Jim Beetle's squatting on some of your land you own up at Stone Point, is that it? Him and his wife, Marshal. You see, they moved into a side house I built, and they won't leave. Well, how come they did that? Where were you? Well, to tell the truth, I let them. I didn't need it for a while, and he was homeless, and so I took pity on him. But I told them only for two months, and it's four months now. They won't leave, Marshal, and they say they'll shoot me if I ever come near them again. And you're saying they'll shoot me, too, huh? Where do you meet him, Marshal? You'll see. All right, Clay. I'll ride out there tomorrow. Look at that, Mr. Dillon. What was Clay talking about? A sawed house? That's nothing more than a hut. It ain't even got windows, I can see. Yeah, it isn't much, is it? Hey, there's Beetle's wife now. Just, just come out here. What's she carrying a rifle for? Well, I guess Clay wasn't lying, Chester. I uh, think this is far enough. We'd better get on. <laughs> Miss Beetle? Who are you? You know my name. I'm Marshal Dillon, ma'am, from Dodge, and this is Chester Proudfoot. Uh, Pleased to meet you, Miss Beetle. Who are you looking for? Uh, nobody, ma'am. I, uh, I wanted to talk to you and your husband. Is he around? He's inside. Well, would you tell him that we're here? 
Mr. Beetle? What? Come out here. Don't forget your rifle. Who is that, Claire? Marshal from Dodd. What do you want, Marshal? Beetle, I've got a court order here that says that uh, you've got to move out of that house and off this land. Clay sent you. No, Clay didn't send me. But he got the order, and it's legal. And, well, it's my job to carry it out. I don't know nothing about all that. We ain't moving. Look, you can find some land of your own somewhere. Why do you want to squat on somebody else? This is our land. All around Stone Point, here's ours. Bought and paid for. What do you mean, bought and paid for? Forty acres paid a dollar fifty acre for it. Not more than a land is worth. We throwed in the hut and them hogs to boot. Who did? Who'd you buy it from? Clay's who? Come around now saying we don't own it wants us off of it. I told him last time I'd shoot him if he'd come near here again. Uh, Clay says that he was letting you live here for a while, helping you out. For sixty dollars, helping me out? I'm working this land, Marshal. Going to farm me some crops here. It ain't very good land, but we'll make it. Wait, if this is true, where is your deed for the place? Deed? You know, Mr. Beetle, that's that paper Clay gave us when we paid him the money. Oh, that. Right. Well, do you have it? No. Oh, where is it? Well, he took it. What he did? What do you mean, he took it? Well, that was before he got mean about us moving off of here. Here's what happened. A few weeks back, Clay come by, said he'd be neighborly. He'd take a paper into Dodge and fix it up to the land office first. Something like that. Anyways, he took it. I see. Then your deed hadn't been registered. Huh? Marshal, I can't even read. I don't know what it was. Well, do you have any proof that you paid him the money? I don't need no proof. Other than I'm here and I'm going to stay. Yeah. Where did you get the $60, Beetle? Work for it. Where'd anybody get money less than they steal it? Clay stole mine. This land ain't worth $20. It's poor land. Then why did you buy it? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you kind of like the name Stone Point. But I ain't moving, Marshal. Not for Clay, nor for you, nor for nobody. Well, if you can't prove it's yours, you're going to have to move, Beetle. Marshal. My old woman's as good a rifle shot as I am. Practice every day. You don't know if I'm lying to you or not, do you, Marshal? No, I don't. Well, maybe you'll never know. But we ain't moving. Not alive, we ain't. All right, Beetle, I'll see what I can find at the land office. If your deed's been registered, well, then you're okay. Just don't make no mind to me about that, Marshal. Or about who's lying or who ain't, neither. But we'll kill us anybody comes a bothering. Now, you get on back to Dodge. And you stay there. Nah, it's no use talking, Chester. Let's go. You tell Clay the same thing. I'll shoot him on sight. cigarette ever soared to such heights in so short a time. And still, L&M continues to break sales records everywhere, winning more and more smokers every day. What's the answer? It's the filter that counts. It's the filter that counts. And no filter compares with L&M's miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. This is why L&M gives you much more flavor, much less nicotine, a light and mild smoke. Remember, only L&M gives you effective filtration. No other cigarette has anything like it. Buy a carton today and you'll say, This is it, L&M filter. This is it, something new. Now two sizes. L&M filter, new king size and regular too. This is it, L&M filter. L&M filters with the miracle tip. Join the trend to L&M. 
king size or regular. Both at the same low price. When do you think Marshal Dillon will be back, Chester? Well, he went over to the land office, Clay, looking up Beetle's deed. But he ought to be back most any time now. I should have told you them Beetles are nothing but liars. They sure fooled me when I first met them. Mm, they are kindly hard to get along with, I'll say that. I'd do it again, though. You would? I mean, help people out just because I got in trouble with them don't mean I ain't never going to help nobody again. I ain't that small a man. Mm. Oh, hello, Marshal. What'd you find out? Ah, oh, there's nothing at the land office. Well, of course there ain't. I went up to see Judge Miller. He's riding circuit through here now. What'd he say, Mr. Dillon? Well, the way things stand, the Beatles have got to move. Well, I can't feel sorry for them the way they acted. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? I want you to ride out there and tell them they got a week. One week. Okay, Mr. Dillon. Well, that's settled. I, I sure hate to put you to all this trouble, Marshal, but a man can't lose his land. No, no, of course not. Even if it ain't the best land around. Well, I'll be going now. I'll, I'll see you next week after they've got off. Yeah, sure, Clay. So long. So long. Uh, that ain't going to be easy, Mr. Dillon. No, it isn't, Chester. Out in that flat country, you sure can't sneak up on nobody. And Clay says that sod hut's built like a fort. It's got no windows, and the door's four inches thick, and with a big bar on the inside, he says there's no way anybody busting in there. Yeah, it's solid, all right. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Dillon, maybe Clay's lying. Maybe they did buy it from him. Oh, that's a hard way to make $60, Chester. Sell some land and then get a hold of the deed and tear it up and then go to court and so on. Yes, sir, it sure don't make sense. Especially since they all admit the land's not much good. Well, somebody's lying. Yeah, but there's no way of proving who. Anyway, the law's on Clay's side, Chester. And I'll go with you. We'll tell him one week. And I hope nobody gets killed in this. Kitty. Hello, Matt. Sit down. I was supposed to meet Chester here. I thought I was in the wrong place when I saw you. I got tired of the Texas Trail, Matt. Got the elephants and might change my luck. Are you going to work here from now on? From now on's a long time, Matt. Yes, Chester. Just came in. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll give him time for a beer. I was talking to him this afternoon. He says you're taking on the Beatles tomorrow. Yeah, they've had their week. <laughs> From what I hear of them, I sure don't envy you that job. No, I'm not looking forward to it, Kitty. I met Jim Beetle once. He's a tough old turkey. Well, I wish I knew whether he's a liar or not. It's hard to tell with a man like that. He's a darn thin brain. Well, he's still smart enough to be a liar. So is Clay. Yeah. Well, he's no killer, though. But I'll bet it wouldn't keep old Beetle awake night shooting somebody. No, I don't think it would. But why all this trouble over some land that neither of them think is any good? Maybe they're both crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to think they are, Kitty. <coughs> hey. Hey, what's the matter, Kitty? You want some water? Huh? No. <coughs> I'll be all right. <coughs> Oh, <laughs> well, what started that? I don't know, Matt. <laughs> Suddenly got a whiff or something. Like, like breathing the fumes off a match. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know. 
Kitty, that's the best cough you ever had. Well, I'm glad you like it. No, I mean, for me, it was. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, Chester's finished his beer. We got some work to do. Uh, good luck with the Beatles tomorrow, Matt. I think we'll have it, Kitty. Thanks to you. So long. <laughs> I wish there was a moon tonight, Mr. Dillon. A man can get shot in the moonlight, Chester. Well, the Beatles ain't gonna shoot us if we can't even find them. Well, it's right ahead of us. We better go afoot from here. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, uh, you got everything, Chester? I got the bag of sulfur and saddle blanket, Mr. Dillon. Okay, now here's what we'll do. We'll sneak around back of the hut, and I'll help you up onto the roof. Well, that ridge pole might not prove stout enough for me and all that sod on it, too. What if it busts through, Mr. Dillon? Well, if it does, we're in trouble. You mean I'm in trouble? Now, you're lighter than I am, Chester. Okay, sir. Now, there are only two openings in that hut, the door and the stovepipe. Mm. So far, they is. Look, if it's medals you want, Chester, you better go back to the Army. Well, forevermore, can a man complain just a little? Yeah, sure, but later, huh? For wasting time. Now, when you get up on the roof, you crawl over to the stovepipe. And pour that bag of sulfur down it. The coals on their stove will do the rest. And then I'll cover the pipe with this saddle blanket and just make it worse for him, hmm? That's right. I'll be waiting near the door for him. But you jump down and be ready to help me in case they come out fighting. This is going to make them awful mad, Mr. Dillon. You know what burning sulfur does to you. Well, I know what it does to Kitty. Well, you all set? Much as I'll ever be. I helped Chester up onto the roof and then moved around to the door and waited. My biggest worry was whether the Beatles would have time and think fast enough to come out armed and ready for trouble. The only thing I was sure of was that they'd come out. Sulfur fumes could drive a she-bear away from her young. I was thinking about that when I heard them inside. <laughs> Okay, Chester, they left their rifles. Come on down. Mr. Oh, get in here. Oh, Chester. Oh, I can't see a Beetle, you and your wife stay right there. It's a marshal clear. Oh, Mr. Dillon. One of them was on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> and my clown is getting a horse. You don't have to run. Nobody's going to hurt you. Mr. Dillon. Come on, hurry. I'm going to find my gun. You ain't shooting so long. Come on out of there, Chester. <laughs> you hurt? Well, I had my leg caught, but I got loose. I knew that doggone thing wouldn't hold. You're limping. How bad are you hurt? Oh, I just bruised it. It ain't nothing. Where's the beetles? That's them. You mean they got away? Oh, we weren't trying to arrest them, Chester. All I wanted was to get them outside unarmed so I could make them pack up and move out. <laughs> well, they moved out. What with that roof all busted in. Oh, ain't it a mess? Uh, we'll carry out what stuff are theirs we can and load it on that wagon. They can pick it up and dodge. Tonight? No, we'll camp here tonight. Do it in the morning. I don't know about them beetles, Mr. Dillon. They ain't gonna quit this easy. Uh, maybe not. But at least we got them out in the open. I'm thinking it was more comfortable when they wasn't out in the open, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> This is it, L and M filters. This is it, light and mild. Coast to coast, smokers are saying better tasting filter tip cigarette. This is it, L and M filters. L and M filters with the miracle tip. Never before have smokers spoken so enthusiastically about a cigarette, and backed up their words with record breaking sales. Dorothy Kilgallen, the famous columnist, said. There's nothing like L&M's filter. Gives you more flavor, too. And this from actor Maurice Evans. My doctor suggested this filter. 
I recommend her to you as the best. Mrs. Charles Evans Hughes the third told us, your L&M has the perfect filter. What a wonderful smoke you get. Yes, it's the filter that counts. And no filter compares with L&M's miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Our statement of quality goes unchallenged. L&M is America's highest quality and best filter cigarette. Join the trend to L&M. L&M, king size or regular. And both at the same low price. Evening, Doc. Sit down and help me watch Front Street, Matt. <laughs> okay, Doc, I'll join you for a while. Yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. Well, you got nothing better to do than sit out on the hotel porch here and stare at your fellow man? Fellow man? Oh, not my fellow man. All I have in common with most of these thieves and scallywags is fingers and toes and bones and skin and things like that. <laughs> I thought doctors were supposed to like people. Oh, yeah, well, who told you that? Some hard rock miner? Yeah. What does a miner know about doctors? Uh, you make it tough, Doc. I make what tough? Talk. Oh, I do. Oh, I make... Oh, I do. Well, I heard about how you talked the Beatles into getting off Clay's land out at Stone Point. Oh, you did real fine there. Well, we got them off anyway. They came into Dodge for their belongings this afternoon. Yes, I saw them, too. Oh, those poor... Oh, they, what are they going to do now? I'll find some land of their own, maybe. You don't believe their story? I'm an agent of the law, Doc. It doesn't matter whether I believe it or not. The law demands proof. And they didn't have any. Mm. Oh, I understand, man. What? That, that's right down the street, Matt. Yeah. You better come, too, Doc. Uh, uh, yes. It's a little early in the evening for shooting, isn't it? Who told you that, Doc? Some hard rock miner? Uh, oh, well, I guess you're right, Matt. Yes. Well, anyway, maybe it's just some cowboy trying to bring down the moon. Yeah, well, there isn't any moon. Yeah, besides, there's a, there's a crowd up there, too. What happened, Chester? Oh, I seen the whole thing. I wasn't 30 feet off. I was standing back there talking to Mr. Green about what his... What happened, Chester? Yes, sir. It's Clay, Mr. Millen. Oh. You better get up there, Doc. Looked like he was shot bad. Who shot him? Jim Beetle. He walked right up to him on the street there and pulled out a gun and shot him twice. Uh, where's Beetle now? That first alley, he ran up there. Yeah. Doc, go take care of Clay. Oh, oh yes, yes, I'm going, I'm going. You come with me, Chester. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you wait here, Chester. Unless he gets me. Okay, Mr. Dillon. Come no closer, Marshal. You killed one man, Beetle. That's enough. Kill me a lot of men if I have to. Beetle. Throw your gun out. I told you, don't you come no closer. I have to, Beetle. Now, wait there, Chester. You get him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I got him. Find a couple of men and go take him up to Doc's, will you? Well, here's Doc now. Yes, oh, somebody else been killed here? Beetle, Doc. He tried to shoot Mr. Dillon. Clay's dead, huh, Doc? Yes, he was killed instantly, Matt. Two bullets right through his chest. Well, I guess the law wasn't much help to him after all. Well, you did what you could, Matt. Uh, Marshal Dillon. Yeah. 
My name's Keller, Marshal. I'm an agent for the Santa Fe Railroad. Okay, Keller, but if you want to talk, come to see me at my office later. A couple of men have just been killed here. It's Clay I want to talk about, Marshal. Oh? Yeah. His land out of Stone Point. Now, what's your interest in Stone Point? The railroad's planning ahead, Marshal. We want to build a station at Stone Point. I came out here to close the deal with Clay. Close the deal? You mean you've already talked to Clay about this? Oh, over a month ago, Marshal. Yeah, he said he owned all but 40 acres and was going to get that back. Oh, I see. Well, we didn't want to buy his land. All we wanted from him was a free lease for where the station will stand. Well, that was fair enough, don't you think? Station there, Stone Point land, will become pretty valuable. Property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you come see me at noon tomorrow, Mr. Keller, and I'll, uh... I'll have the rightful owner of that land in my office. But I don't understand. At see, noon we... tomorrow, huh? Oh, okay, Marshal. Good night. Chester. Yes, sir. Let's go find Miss Beetle. And tell her that Stone Point belongs to her. I know it's too late, and I don't suppose it'll do any good, but... I want to tell her how sorry I am. Yes, sir. That'd make me feel better, too, Mr. Dillon. And now our star, William Conrad. If you're smoking a filter tip cigarette, I'm certain you'll enjoy... L and M filters, either king size or regular. L and M's give you much more flavor, much less nicotine. They're just what the doctor ordered. Try them, king size or regular, both at the same low price. <laughs> Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Jeanette Nolan, and Joe Cranston. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, likes to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. Hear gun smoke every Saturday, this same time, this same station. Hear the great new Perry Como radio show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also on CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network.